Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel, and today I want to talk about something pretty serious, and I'm sure you've heard this word thrown around before, palytoxin. Um, those of you who own a reef tank, doesn't matter what kind of corals you have, it's something you should um, know about and something you should understand, uh, just for good coral husbandry and your health in general. So I'm going to get right to it um, right away. Check out this awesome bubble tip. I've been feeding it lately, and wow, it's like super impressive instantly overnight. Um, I'll have to let you guys know what I've been feeding it later on because wow. The only side effect is it also makes my Aptasia huge. So that's, it's making my bubble tip huge, but also the Aptasia. I did order a laser um, that will be here next week. So I'm really excited to get into that with you guys and working on killing the Aptasia and finally, finally finish that Aptasia video. Because it's been driving me crazy. Um, there's also some Mahanos in here, and some of you who think they're pretty, you may not know what they are, and they look really cool for beginners, but after a while, you start to understand. So, these are imported reef rocks, and they're pretty incredible. Now, I just turned up the whites pretty high, so it doesn't look as elegant and beautiful as it normally they normally do under the blues. But, I wanted to show you while the corals were closed up, the, the, um, the pallies here. And Pali grandis are a lot easier to see with this than the small zoanthillas. Um, I mean, um, zoanthids, sorry. But these things give off a mucus. And anyone who's ever handled these or tried to frag those pallies, you can tell right away that they give off a crazy mucus. Now, people in general are worried about pali toxin or you've never heard of it. And they think that it's the pallies, and if you stay away from pallies, you're going to be fine. But that's not the case. It's not actually the pallies that are toxins. Toxic. 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 The pallies aren't, but they're actually toxic. It's the bacteria that's growing around the mucus and that lives off of it. So, carbon is number one way to get rid of that pally toxin in your tank. If you're running carbon, you just frag a lot of corals, you want to run carbon because that'll clean that up. A lot of the mucus comes off after you cut them, and so we're going to get into it on, on several different levels. I know I'm just babbling right now, I'm staring at the tank, I do that, sorry guys. But I want to get in and tell you guys a little bit more about the palytoxin and, and why and, and how to avoid it and what it does and all that good stuff. So this is just a quick breakdown, I'm going to do it very simple for you guys and we'll go on from there. So I wrote down on my trusty board over here a little chart for you guys. You know I like to do that. So here you go, all right? Failure is not an option. I take that in all aspects of my life. My reef, my health, my business, my family, everything. So here we go, let's break it down. Pally toxin, you can see right here, this is my crazy pally drawing I did. That thing's scary as hell, you don't wanna touch it. Um, so here you got three ways to enter your body. Number one, ingestion and eating. Now I don't think anyone's out there eating their rocks and eating palytoxin because that would be stupid. But I do think people are draining their coral tanks and they're putting their mouth on these hoses. If you're trying to prime this and you put your mouth on it after you just scraped it against some rocks, and I've seen some people's tanks and they're not pretty. They let them overgrow for years. You look at a rock and there's just the nastiest stuff growing on it, and it's it's just you know it's when you're cleaning that you got to be careful about you know not just the fragging and stuff too but I'll go through this list and kind of and tell you why that's a problem. So okay, so ingestion, not just eating, but that can be like I said, putting a hose in your mouth, putting your pliers in your mouth, your pen, your tweezers, whatever you do, you can get it in your mouth that way. So by eating, it's only mild poisoning, not as severe. The cases that are reported um, are not that dangerous. Now eye or skin, if you get squirted in the eye, oh my gosh, taking a mushroom out of your tank or messing with something and it squirts a little bit of liquid, you're on the bandsaw and you're cutting, it, it happens to me all the time I get squirted. So eye or skin contact, direct contact, even a little abrasion on your skin, you may have not known it, you got punctured picking up a rock or something. So that's something you need to watch out for. And the swelling can be dangerous. I've seen people's eyes swollen shut. So this one, you want to be careful for. So and the worst is inhaling a vapor. Breathing in palytoxin is by far going to be the worst. 
Um, and one of the ways to do that is people who work in maybe a small area, they're boiling their rocks, trying to clean them. They just think that's the fastest way. Throw it in a pot, cook the rock clean, um, and right away you're just going to form a vapor and you're probably going to kill yourself. So let me tell you about some ways to uh, prevent it. I'll go back over this one more time. Like I said, it's Friday. I'm just kind of like out there just talking. I wanted to get this done. I didn't want to wait any longer just in case some of you guys are putting your hose in your mouth every night. It, it's something I can warn you. <laughs> you do not want to get um, your lips or eyes or anything infected. So be careful. All right. So to prevent this, do not put in your mouth hose, wear a mask, coral squirt. There you go. That's my little squirt sign right there. Um, just know if you've ever taken mushrooms out of your tank and they're filled with water or something on the bottom, as soon as you take them out, they will start squirting on you and you do not want that in your face. So, number two, I've said this already, wear eye protection, wear eye goggles, a mouth guard, some kind of cover, wear gloves. You want to run carbon in your tank, especially after fragging and rinsing your hands. If you're not wearing gloves, make sure you rinse several times. So, and have a, a well-ventilated room, a room with a fan. Uh, avoid the slime. The slime is where the bacteria is going to be, and that's one of the things that you want to avoid. So, there you guys go. I'll show you my little palytoxin chart one more time. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to edit this. I'll probably just throw it up there real quick. It's Friday. If you pay attention, great. If you have any questions, great. Feel free to ask me. But palytoxin, keep it out of your mouth out of your eyes, your skin, don't inhale it, if you're fragging, use carbon, gloves, all that stuff. I said it a million times, go back and watch this video again, trust me, you do not want your eyes swollen shut, once it happens, it's just, you'll never forget it for the rest of your life. And don't blame the fish tank, it's because you're not doing the right thing, if you get this, it's your own fault for being a, a lazy bastard, or for cutting steps, and not doing the right thing. So it is not a palytoxin from the pallies. It's actually a bacteria that is growing, um, I guess, symbi symbiotically with the coral. So that's what we're going to watch out for. There you guys go. That's my quick breakdown on the palytoxin. I will watch this in a second. I'm just going to probably post it. I got some corals. We're clearing out stock as we're finishing up the other tanks and moving some stuff around. So I'll probably post some crazy prices today, just on some corals that I fragged. So if you guys are looking for something sweet, um, I did also change around the T5 lighting again, uh, just because I've noticed that the Montes do so much better under the T5s, and they get so much fuller and richer color than under the LEDs. So that's something I still have to finish the breakdown video for you guys on par. I just really wanted to do my research on the lights and the numbers and test the meter and know what equipment I was using to test. That way, I just don't want to screw anyone up or give you or mislead you guys in any direction because a lot of times it's not your water quality, it's your lighting. And if you don't know what you're doing or what corals you have, and I mean, it's amazing. They don't just die right away, they fade. They'll turn brown. If you got crappy lighting, it's amazing what will happen. So check it out, guys. All right, man, there you go. Happy Friday, enjoy your weekends. Give somebody a hug. And as always, happy reefing until the next time. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. And thank you for being part of the Coralus community.